down, you're probably a little surprised by this candy baroque intro and all this is because this video will be about my favorite movie which I could watch approximately uh, twice a week. So as you may have guessed, today we will talk about the movie Marie Antoinette and its beautiful design. The movie was released in 2006, two years after the movie Lost in Translation, for which Sophie Coppola received an Oscar for Best Queen Play. If you've ever seen this film, you've probably noticed that it has a lot in common with the film Marie Antoinette. The woman is alone in company of many people and she struggles a little with herself and has a kind of problematic relationship with her husband. And all this is wrapped in a dreamy atmosphere and pastel colors, which are typical for directing of Coppola. And such a woman is also Marie Antoinette. I've always felt the main theme of the film is that she actually never wanted to be a queen. For example, when she's faced with the idea of brokering peace between nations, she prefers to discuss a sleeve ruffle. So Marie Antoinette is not a biographical film with historical facts and events, but it's a highly personal thing about a very young woman forced to play a very public role uh, that means uh, fulfilling uh, many of expectations and duties for her. And at the same time, movie is portraying her deep loneliness and her dream and potential trap in the system of the French court. Coppola tells us masterfully that being a queen is a lonely and a very difficult fate and she points it at a quiet scenes of despair. These silent scenes are then replaced by lavish parties and demonstration of life in absolute luxury, which also gradually lose its sheen until finally Marie Antoinette feels the impact of her frivolous action and realizes that it's nothing more than a gilded cage. After all, as Coppola herself said, my film is not about being, but about becoming. <laughs> Let them eat cake. This is her best known and iconic quote, which actually is probably not even something she really said. And also in the movie is this quote presented uh, as some kind of fake news. But what is true is that Maria Antoinette did like a sweet. And the beautiful fact that the presentation of the sweets is a very important part of the movie because cakes and sweets, macarons help to create the mood of the scenes. Let's talk about a little bit of the food habits of real Marie Antoinette. It's known that she loved to start the day with a cup of coffee or hot chocolate. She even had her own chocolatier at Versailles to supply her with exactly what she wanted. She was also known for her obsession with treats like petit fours, crystallized fruits and wafers. She ate or offered them to her guest. But she did not forget on her figure and to keep slim bigger, she often ate just a broth with vegetables for dinner. In the movie, she is presented that she spent much of her time drinking champagne. But reports says that she did not drink alcohol very much at all, if ever. And what is not historically accurate are all colorful and beautiful cakes. According to reports, the cakes were much more simple and not so highly decorated and beautiful to look at. In the movie are presented the sweets, macarons, cakes made by luxury bakery La Prise, founded in 1862. In what best known for double decker macarons. When I was searching the term La in the internet, I found this lovely piece of cakes. In the end, I couldn't resist and I bought the book Tea Time with more than 60 sweet and savory recipes fit for Marie Antoinette. Look at this, the books and design of the book itself is so amazing and lovely that I would eat the book too. If you love or hate the movie and its subject, it's impossible to deny uh, that its costume designed by Milena Canonero were fascinating. Milena Canonero, winner of four Oscars, created around 170 costumes for this movie, 100 for Kiss and Dance, and you can see the 60 of them in the movie. Canonero embarked on long research before the tailoring houses started working. She studied the paintings and dress of the time and replicating style and borrowing the color palettes. 
for the London magazine Canorama Revealed. At the start of pre-production, Coppola handed me a box of pasta macarons from the La Durée pastry house and she told me, these are the colors I love, recalls Canorama. I use them as a palette, Sophia was clear about coloration, but left the rest of me. Many of you will probably now wonder if the costumes are historically accurate. Well, I think the patterns are generally correct, but the way of color combination is much more innovative and also jewelry are used in free way. Why why not? Important thing is that the costumes work well in the movie and show their history can inspire the creative industries and arts. I also very much appreciate that the costumes were made of quality silk fabric. For example, this dress in which Maria walks in the garden are sent from Dupion. And look at these buttons, they are just gorgeous. This is called a sense of detail. This dress, which she wore to mass, are made of rubbery fabric, Venetian textile company founded in 1858 and cherry team fabric itself has already appeared in the film Dangerous Relations and now also in the Bridgerton series. The fabric can be bought in Eto Fahisho for a lot of money, but unfortunately it's no longer available in blue-red variant. But the most interesting aspect of the costume is that they are telling a story. Canonero managed to turn the dresses into relevant elements to the narrative itself and dressing in the movie is an essential part of the construction and identity. If you look through her many costumes, you will notice that they are support the narrative and create a specific look for whole movie. In relation to the narrative, the movie divides Marie Antoinette's life into four parts. Shoots of macarons, pastries and other sweets are edited constantly in the movie and Marie Antoinette herself is more than once described by others like piece of cake. And this statement is logically reflected in the costumes which portray her as a sweet little cake of pasta color. First thing Marie Antoinette had to do when she arrived in France was that she had to redress herself with a French gown. The meaning of the scenes is pretty clear. She is forced to take a new identity, so she had to change the clothes. For this new identity, I used the bright, light pastel colors. After Marie Antoinette started going wild, the bright yellow, pink and blue appears in her costumes. In this part is very interesting the scenes when she wearing dress with pattern matching room walls in Versailles. It seems that she fades into it and she is losing herself into the wall, into the Versailles. She is trapped in Versailles. And you also surely remember the iconic scenes with the song Ivan Candy. In this shot you see many shoes that were designed by Manolo Blachniks. Finally, when she gave a birth a child and she has fulfilled her function as a queen, she gets a free pass from Versailles to La Petite Trayon where she can enjoy nature and country life and it seems that she is finally at peace with herself. This mental change you can recognize through change in costumes. Design of the dress turned away from bright silk, bright pastel to simple cotton and white and cream color shades. This change in dress is also reflected in one dialogue with the maid. I want something simple, natural to wear in the garden. The death of her mother starts the last period for her, a period of grief and pain. Not only she has to stand the death of her mother and son, but she also starts to feel consequences of her past frivolous lifestyle because the French Revolution is approaching. The color palette is reduced to dark, black, purple and dark blue. And these difficult moments, Marie Antoinette says goodbye to us and also to her Lime Avenues. And that's all, I hope you liked this video and please excuse my English uh, if I said something wrong, I'm, I'm still learning. So thank you and bye.